What's going on guys? Welcome back to Life by the Bow. I'm Clay, this is my fiance Stephanie, and the reason why I'm reintroducing us is because I can see we have a lot new subscribers. We have went up 2,000 in the past two weeks. Absolutely insane. But we're gonna go out, film another video today, showcasing our beautiful backyard, as always. So go ahead, tell them what we're gonna be doing today. All right, so today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be sight fishing for hogfish. A lot of you haven't seen that, so stick around so we can show you some new techniques. So we just made it to our hogfish spot here and I'm gonna give you guys some really rich information based on how to do this. Um, first things first, you wanna get out to a patch reef that's at least somewhere around three miles offshore. The reason why is because when you get this far out, the hogfish are a lot bigger and that's really important um, when it comes to harvesting these fish because they have to be 16 inches at the fork. The way to find a shallow patch reef, if you don't already know how to do it on your GPS, it's very simple. You can just drive out here and you just wanna look for discoloration in the water. But the way we're actually gonna be catching them is with our mask and snorkel, obviously, so that way when we're looking down, we can see these fish. And the rig that we're going to be using, we're not going to be using a rod and reel, which is really, really cool. This is called a yo-yo and we have 30 pound mono on here tied off to a 10 foot, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, a little split shot weight, and then a circle hook. And we're gonna tip that with a shrimp. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna drop this right in front of a hogfish once you find him. Once he eats it, get that circle hook right in the corner of his mouth, and it's a done deal from then on out. It's all fighting with your hands, it's so cool. literally like four of them down there this size if not bigger just all fighting over the shrimp and I'll just sit there feed them for like 30 minutes and then finally that one committed baby Whew. 
I'm pretty sure he's legal too. So we're gonna give this fish a measure now. And the way you actually measure hogfish is to what's called the fork of their tail right here. You don't go for maximum tail length. You go for the fork, which is right here. So we're gonna zero him out from his mouth. And as you can see, he is well over 16. Almost stretching out towards 18, but man, look at how beautiful this fish is. Check out all those yellows, those blues. And what's crazy too, is when they're swimming around in the sand, they'll be like paper white. And then all of a sudden, they'll get up against a coral head or a fan and they'll turn like vibrant red. And it is just so crazy how they camouflage. But he's going in the box. I'm gonna tell you what, he's gonna taste good. Well, as you just saw, we have one fish in the box and we're back on the hunt. But you may ask, why not just spear hogfish rather than catching them on hook and line? Well, in previous years, hogfish only needed to be 12 inches of the fork. So it was very easy to differentiate a legal fish from an illegal fish. Not only do we enjoy the challenge of sight fishing, but it ensures a safe release of an undersized fish. Like most reef fish, you'll notice that a hogfish is very slim. This allows the fish to slip through little cracks and crevices in order to avoid predators in addition to their outstanding camouflage. Another thing to note is their snout, which is used to root in the sand just like a hog does in the dirt to feed on little shrimp, crabs, and other crustaceans, hence their name, the hogfish. But what's really cool is that all hogfish start out as females. Around the age of three, they transition into males where they typically measure 14 inches in length. Once a hogfish successfully transitions into a male, it will claim his territory on the reef and protect the females. So if you jump in the water and you find a group of juvenile hogfish, there's always a couple big ones around. never had to fight for a hogfish so hard in my entire life. As soon as I hooked him, he went right underneath the rock and he went in and out of it probably about three times. That's a nice one. Oh my God. Your yo-yo's your you yo no floating back there. I know, that's the thing, because all the line is wrapped up inside of a rock. Oh yeah, he's way over 16 almost 17. So it looks like we are limited out on hogfish today. Just so you guys know, hogfish, you're allowed one per person in Atlantic waters. Um, another thing too is before you ever go fishing for any species, always log on to FWC's website, check the regulations because they're constantly changing um, without our notice. So. The reason why you want to do that, most importantly, we want to be able to sustain our fishery. And number two, 
we want to make sure we're not getting in trouble, but I say we throw them in the cooler. Let's do a little relaxing, head to Mosquito Bank. What do you say? Let's do it. We just made it to Mosquito Bank and we've had a fantastic day so far. So not only are we catching tans, but we're catching hog because we limited out on two hog fish. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and right now we're enjoying some black fin tuna that me and Stephanie's Uncle Ryan caught yesterday. I gotta tell you, I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. What mm -hmm. a blessing. I mean. Like we said, we just got our limit on hogfish. We're eating fresh black pin tuna. And to top it all off, came out here to Mosquito Bank just to relax for the whole rest of the day. Mosquito Bank is absolutely beautiful. I mean, it's Mosquito Bank. Other people call it White Sands. Some people call it Mosquito Bank because it's right in front of a patch reef called Mosquito Bank. So that's just what we refer to it as. But it is just such a beautiful place because it's so comparable to the Bahamas, mm -hmm. yet it's not too far off of Key Largo, about two, three miles. Definitely a big boat sandbar because it does get a little rough out here sometimes, not too favorable for little boats, but it's nice and calm today. So it is just perfect. So we're gonna get in the water, relax, and we will see you guys back at the dock. Alrighty guys, just made it back to the house here. So you can see I'm about to clean up all these hog fish so we can get them ready for Stephanie to cook right now. So the first thing you want to do is go down his spine. Come out the back. Now come from underneath. Go around his shoulder. Your stomach. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip them and do that whole entire process over again. The reason why I don't take the meat off completely is just because it's a lot easier to do your cuts when there's meat on the side of the fish. Now what we're gonna do is just literally run our knife right along his back. And that's gonna remove all of the meat from the fish. You always want to put a little bend in your knife as it's going to make it easier to strip the meat. Now that the meat's off the fish, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the skin from the meat. Since I'm using kind of a small knife, what I like to do is actually cut the meat in half. It makes it easier for me to remove the skin. And that right there is the finished product ready to eat. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Tonight, I'm gonna be doing a popular Italian dish. It's gonna be fish piccata. So I feel like hogfish is a great alternative for chicken because it's such a white meat. Also, in my piccata, what I'm gonna be using is some salt, pepper, white wine, some capers, some spaghetti, and some, or two more things, parsley and lemon. We're gonna have to do two things of it. Too much. One well, for so, you. Ste Stephanie likes to enjoy the recipe independently from all the other ingredients. Mm. <laughs> That's right. I didn't get like this just looking at it cooked. <laughs> mm. Fun fact: I've actually broken one of these lemon squeezers before by squeezing lemons. 
I guess it's all the steroids. I was about to say that's, that's what somebody said in one of our videos. He made some type of negative comment about steroids. And I was like, hey, I mean, I'll take that as a compliment. Somebody thinking I'm on steroids. All right, now the finishing touch. Parsley. And that is a fish piccata. All right, guys, we have had an amazing day and nothing makes me happier than cooking our catch. And not only that, like I got a great suntan and right. he got some exercise in and that leads me to my recipe. So Clay and I are pretty good about eating healthy. And this recipe I really liked because it doesn't use flour like regular chicken piccata does. So that was awesome and i substituted zucchini noodles for myself and clay had pasta because he was doing all of the exercise today where i was just sitting on the boat and keeping my eyes open that's right so i need the carbs right now yeah and yeah. i am starving so let's dig in here because i cannot wait let's see how this tastes mm. Mm. better than chicken piccata good job does not get better than that i mean it's such a nice feeling that I can literally just like hand the fish over to her and just let her do whatever she wants with it. It's like when you walk into a restaurant and they do cook your catch, so. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna let you guys go. We're gonna finish this dinner. Do not forget, in case you guys missed it in the last video, there is a 15% off promo code mm -hmm. for Avail Gear, my clothing company. Go ahead, log on to the site, get some gear while the promo code is still valid. Um, it's going to be good all the way up until the 17th. But other than that, we're gonna finish this dinner and um, hit the bed because we're exhausted after such a long day. But wouldn't trade it for anything else in the world. Really appreciate you guys here still watching. Hopefully you're subscribed. But until then, we will see you guys next time. Bye.